All right, I'm still working inside the fearsome Spanish Town Dinosaurs.dng file that's found inside the 24 camera raw folder. And in this exercise, we're going to check out the new effects options here inside of Camera Raw 6. And they include the option to add film grain to your image and a post-crop vignette. So a vignetting effect that fits inside the current crop boundaries. Now this marks Camera Raw's first foray into the world of special effects. So I'm going to highlight things by applying a little bit of effects-based sharpening up front. So I'll switch over to the detail panel. And whether you're sharpening to correct an image or to apply a special effect, you're usually better off applying the noise reduction first. So because I want to see what I'm doing, I'll press Control alt 0 or Command option 0 to zoom in to 100%. And then I will scroll up to the creature's eye. And I'm going to increase the luminance value here to 50. And then I'm going to take the luminance detail value down to 0 so that we are, if anything, over smoothing the metallic surface of this animal. Then I'm going to increase the sharpening amount value to its absolute maximum of 150%. I'm going to leave the radius alone and I'll take the detail value up to 50, like so. And I end up achieving this effect here. There's a fair amount of termite trails inside of this image. We are definitely over sharpening things. But the image needs to survive all this other stuff we're going to heap on top of it. So the sharpening is going to turn out to be appropriate. Anyway, to see what we've done, turn off the preview checkbox. There's the dinosaur as it appeared just a moment ago, and here it is now, thanks to the application of these various detail options. Now I'll move over to the effects panel, and I wanna take in the entire image because of the vignetting effect I'm about to apply, so I'll press Control zero, or Command zero on a Mac in order to fit the photo into the image window. And I'm going to increase the amount value to 75%. And if you think about it, this is pretty amazing that you can do this inside of Camera Raw because there's not an equivalent filter out there in the larger world of Photoshop. There's Add Noise, but Add Noise always adds single pixels of noise. And you have control over the amount, but you have no control over the size. It's always one pixel. And you have limited control over roughness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this size value way up to 80, like so, so that we get some big, chunky noise. And notice that the noise ends up affecting the focus, the sharpness of the detail inside of this image. So that's why I started off with as much sharpness as I could muster, because the grain is going to have a detrimental effect on it. Now I'll take the roughness up to 100, and you can see where I'm going with this. I'm no longer interested in this looking like a picture of a dinosaur. I don't want somebody to look at this image and say, gosh, where'd you shoot those cool dinosaurs? I've never seen those before. I want them to think I was actually being attacked and mauled by this terrible creature, and I was lucky to get away alive. So that's why I'm going to add a vignetting effect. Now, I was telling you a few exercises back that I disapprove of post-process vignettes, and I still stand by that because, after all, it's an overused effect. You see it in so many portrait shots, wedding photographs especially, with vignettes all over them, baby photos. It just gets tiresome, in my opinion. And it's so easy to apply that it doesn't make your image look any different than anybody else's. Whereas, if you're getting mauled by a dinosaur, a vignette is appropriate. So you can either apply a bright vignette, like so, by raising the amount value, or you can take that amount value down, which is what I'm going to do, down to, let's say, negative 75, so that we have a very dark vignetting effect. And then I'm going to lower the midpoint value so that the vignette is creeping farther into the image because that's going to give it a more sinister look. And once again, at this point, right, somebody's going to look at this image and go, holy cow, were you being attacked by a dinosaur? Is that what that is? That's exactly the effect we're looking for. All right, now I'm going to take the roundness value down to negative 60 like so, so that we're bending the vignette into a kind of rounded corner effect. So we're sending the vignette outward there a little bit. And the feather value should be higher. We'll take it up to 70%. And then finally, I'm going to raise that highlights value. And that will allow the highlights to show through the vignetting. So we'll still be able to see a little bit of the cloud action and so forth. And I want to make sure that we're seeing the interior of the braying Triceratops' mouth right there so that we know what he's up to. Now, finally, you have these style options in case you're the least bit interested in them. Basically, the idea is highlight priority is going to try to protect the highlights inside the image at the expense of the shadow details. So you're going to trot all over the shadows. Whereas if you'd rather protect the colors, that is the hue values inside your image, then you would try out color priority instead. And you can see how that gives us a very different effect. And then finally, you have the option of just applying an overlay effect. 
So basically, it's analogous to the overlay blend mode inside of Photoshop. And that's going to give us a very weak effect inside of this image. In fact, by far the best solution where this image is concerned is highlight priority. And that is it, folks. That gives you a sense of the terrifying level of special effects that you can apply to an image here inside of Camera Raw 6.